In post-World War II fashion, only one name stood out on the global stage. Hailed as the most influential fashion designer of the late 1940s and 50s, he dominated the catwalk with his voluptuous new look and defined a new business model in the couture industry, establishing a global brand across a wide range of products. Christian Dior was born in a lively seaside town in Normandy in 1905, the son of a wealthy fertilizer manufacturer. But he had to wait until the 1940s to enjoy the sweet smell of his own success. After spending much of the war dressing the wives of Nazi officers and French collaborators, he struck a deal with a struggling clothing company to launch a luxurious new look with a sumptuous silhouette and billowing skirts. The look was influenced by the Belle Epoque ideal of long skirts, tiny waists and beautiful fabrics that his mother had worn in the early 1900s. His couture house was inundated. With orders from celebrities such as actress Rita Hayworth and prima ballerina Margot Fontaine, Dior had put Paris back on the fashion map. One of Dior's biggest fans, Christian Lacroix, remembers his idol was so famous in France at the time that it seemed he wasn't a man but an institution. And the excitement he generated with his collections of luxurious clothes with soft shoulders, waspy waists and full flowing skirts was compounded by his incredible commercial instincts. When a US hosiery company made an offer for the rights to manufacture Dior stockings, he proposed waiving the fee in favor of a percentage of the product's sales, thereby introducing the royalty payment system to fashion. Throughout the 1950s, Christian Dior remained the biggest and best-run haute couture house in Paris. And when the designer died in 1957, French newspaper Le Monde remembered him as a man who was identified with good taste, the art of living, and refined culture that epitomizes Paris to the outside world. His mantle was taken up by young protégé Yves Saint Laurent, who remained faithful to Dior's meticulousness, perfect proportions, and exquisite fabrics, while making the design softer, lighter, and easier to wear. He was replaced in 1960 with Mark Bowen, who imbued the collections with a much more conservative style, designing many famously elegant ball gowns and evening dresses in exotic fabrics. He became a favorite with fashion icon and first lady Jackie Kennedy and introduced the first sporting lines to the Dior wardrobe. In 1996, the responsibility of styling the Dior empire went to the Gibraltar-born British designer John Galliano whose iconoclastic style has won him a host of famous fans. Film star Rachel Weiss was one of the celebrity guests at the unveiling of Galliano's recent collection. I think that with Galliano at the helm, it has this kind of like funkiness as well, so it's a great kind of cocktail of old and new. Sharon Stone was also there. And what does it feel like to be the new face of Dior? Very exciting. It's very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. As eager to pay tribute to tradition as he is to break the rules, Galliano's collection was inspired by illustrations of Dior's work by famous artists. The thesis of the show laid the basis for an eclectic collection of smart, chic street clothes in flesh-toned fabric overlaid in lace. The opening number featuring slinky silk dresses with a sheath of lace over the bodices. Another dress had a trompe l'oeil print that from afar resembled a t-shirt under a lacy top. Another one-shouldered dress had lingerie touches. It's all a mere walk in the park for the prolific John Galliano, who designs a staggering 12 collections a year. Dior's flagship boutique in Paris is a veritable superstore where customers queue for everything from couture wedding dresses to shoes and fragrances, ever anxious to buy into the image of the house that Galliano has recreated. So we're here after the Dior show this evening. What did you think? I thought it was amazing. The music, the models, the costumes, the design, it was amazing.
March 2000, Al Mahar is set within a 25 square kilometre reserve that is home to more than 40 species of flora and fauna, including the oryx that is now extinct in the wild. The reserve has introduced some species